Uh, how many of you have tickets for the fights tomorrow? And dare I ask, how many of you are out here and members of the UFC Fight Club that aren't going to the fights tomorrow night? All right, we got to change that. Uh, I got to tell you guys, you know, I spent six years at ESPN before joining the UFC, and I don't think there's any better visual right now in all of pro sports than Ronda Rousey walking to that octagon. And if you haven't been in Vegas for one of her fights before, uh, just wait. Just a picture of intensity. Uh, she's certainly the best in the world, and we'll see if Sarah McMahon uh, can be the first. You've got to get to the sports book, though. If you like Sarah McMahon, you know, put your money where your mouth is, right? She's a pretty uh, sizable underdog. Uh, she's got nothing, though, on Patrick Cummins uh, in our co-main event against Daniel Cormier. Uh, quick show of hands, though. How many people think Sarah McMahon's getting it done here this weekend? And uh, Ronda Rousey. All right, so some shock there. So, uh, so certainly an exciting weekend. Unfortunately, I got to get on a plane and go to LA to work the post-fight show for Fox Sports One. But an amazing fight card. A lot of things going to happen in this welterweight division as well. Damian Meyer, Rory McDonald, Mike Pyle, a local on the fight card as well. So an exciting fight card. And thank you all, obviously, for spending your Friday here with us. Uh, normally, we have just one guest fighter here for the Q and A, uh, but because you all are such special people, we got two today. Uh, one of them is just a super hot guy the other one is the hottest heavyweight on the planet right now take a quick look at our guest fighters all right so uh, for those of you that haven't been here before here's the drill we have microphones set up on both sides of the stage here and uh, don't be shy come on up you can come up multiple times I expect the guy in the Boston Bruins jersey to absolutely make his way up here at some point uh, these guys are yours for the next 45 minutes or so and any picture or autograph request if you could just wait till the end of the Q&A and we have one brave soul to start us off the mic is yours hold on hold on Zan. I want to clarify yeah, something wait. Anna, there's <laughs> some <laughs> I don't who's know the hot guy and who's the good fighter? Well, I actually think... <laughs> I think we both got it down on that. I mean, I'll, why don't you go send me? Why don't you go over there? Because you're obviously the hot guy. You're the guy that, you know, look at, look at you. You're that guy in high school every guy like me wanted to punch in the face. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. It's called genetics, and you can't do anything about genetics. You just gotta, you gotta deal with it. You know what I mean? These guys are trying to beat me up. And then I'm sure they're the first one. Dude, I called you the hottest heavyweight on the planet. That's pretty good, no? Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty. That was, that was decent. Hottest. Uh, we could, could have been in a different context. Hottest? Not like that, you know. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Well, we can settle this backstage, but for now, young lady, your mic is hot. So, Travis, I talked to a lot of your female fans. You're a hot guy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, I have a question for you, because you already know you're my favorite heavyweight. So, I could barely watch that fight when you fought Bigfoot Silva. I didn't like that fight at all. Me so, neither. no, it took me actually days to watch that fight. But my whole question is how come when the instances like that happen, don't you feel like it would be more fair if it was just a no contest due to injury versus, you know, what happens? And I'll give you guys a little background right here. I was uh, supposed to fight Ben Rothwell, right, in uh, August two years ago. And I showed up to the hotel and there's everybody there but one person and i don't even know where she got my shirt from one person had my shirt on and i went up and i gave her a hug took a picture with her uh you know she didn't even know i wasn't like it, it was so last minute it was maybe five six days before the fight that i got pulled but uh she was there man she was genuinely upset that i wasn't fighting and it, it meant everything to me and i even told her too i said you come my next fight you got tickets no matter what you know she's always been there um, to get to your question though, no, I don't think, I don't think it should have been a no contest, you know, it's a fight, and this yeah. is what we do, you know, uh, the, the, the less, less of the rules, the better for me, you know, the referee should be in there, the reason he's in there is to save your life, because if the guy wasn't going to stop, he would, you know, seriously injure you. So, less rules, the better. I hurt myself, I got hurt, there's no excuses, I don't live my life like that, so, you know, he won, he was the better man. And before I go, I gotta say one thing. I was just telling them in line, I said, I'm not going to your fight in Orlando, because I already know what's gonna happen. After you knock out Verdum, I'll watch you knock out Kane, hopefully here, on 4th of July weekend. Gee, Either way, right you're the champ. That's a fan for me right there. You're the champ, I'm convinced. Right, 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 right. 
Hey, so you guys know I have my phone out like this. It's called Hang With, it's a little app. You guys get on there, it's a live feed. Everybody's seeing you guys now, right now, nationwide. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? I just wanted to know, can I touch your beard? <laughs> you know how many women have asked me that? <laughs> and no. you want to know how many have gotten denied? No. They have all gotten denied, but I will let you touch my beard. Woo! You gotta video this man, this is good stuff. As the Travis Brown fan base continues to swell. I think I need to bring my mustache back. Yeah, dude, I say for the post fight, you go mustache. You don't need Mo Van you just go mustache. I'll go mustache. You gotta compete with the fun boy. Alright, again, we got a microphone on this side as well uh, for any of you brave souls. Yes, sir. Uh, Luke, we saw you fight in Atlanta, man. You did phenomenal. Uh, what's kind of the future for you, and how do you dominate the UFC in the heavyweight division? Just keep kicking people in the liver. Do what I did last time. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I don't know where you've been coming from here. You yeah, Larry just sat down. This gentleman right here. Uh, the um, yeah. Okay, uh, you. you know, I just, I just, uh, I think I finally found the right mindset for fighting, and, and just. Uh, Waiting for the openings and, and being a sniper, and I, a lot of times I was too aggressive in the past. I might have got emotional, but uh, I'm there. I, uh, I'm coming into my prime, and uh, you know the mindset's right, and uh, just keep coming back like I did last time, obviously. So uh, I, I think this next fight with Boach is going to be uh, could, could go very similar to my last fight, and I hope it does. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a tough fight. I mean, that's a hard middleweight to finish, Tim Boach. But I guess if anybody can do it, I, I guess I'd nominate you. Thank you, thank you. All right, I like my chance. I got it. I yeah. like the sweater. Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for calling me out, John. Appreciate it. Um, hi, Luke. Hi, Travis. Uh, Travis, I saw you in Boston uh, knock out the uh, Overeem, and obviously your last fight was very impressive. Um, after you beat Verdum, you're going to be known as a legend killer, and. Uh, after you would beat for Doom, hopefully Dana has you and Kane in Boston. And if he does, you can wear my shirt at the weigh-in. Go get him, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support, man. I'm really glad that you let me wear your shirt and not your underwear. <laughs> I asked you to go stand over there away from me. Oh. Freaking out, guys. <laughs> hey, so uh, I got to ask you guys while we're waiting for our, our next question. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Sarah McMahon. Uh, the crowd here seems pretty split. Uh, certainly the odds makers have installed Rousey as about a four, five, and one favorite. Uh, we'll start with you, TB. Who do you like? You know, man, um, as an athlete, I've, my entire career has been based off of overcoming uh, being the underdog. You know, in the last, what, three, four, five fights, I've been the underdog. So, um, for me, again, as an athlete, you have to look at it as Ronda's the champ. It's very hard to beat the champs. She's the champ for a reason. I think Ronda's going to take it, not because I don't like Sarah, but because I think that uh, she has more tools to use. She, her her skill set's sharper. I think she's a little more seasoned. Um, but Sarah is a game opponent. I love her. She's a sweetheart, and she's mean in the cage. So um, I'm going to have to go with the champ, but I'm not. It's a pick em for me. For, for me, I mean, they're both champions. They're both training since pretty much birth in their own you know disciplines yeah, right. so uh, I mean they uh those girls are amazing Sarah actually came by our gym train and uh, she impressed me a lot uh, Rhonda I think her biggest advantage is her last fight I think she got a lot of confidence in her stand-up and uh, just being able to relax you know more than one round and I think uh, she's finally showed a little more confidence in her stand-up which I haven't seen and I think that could play a huge role in this fight if uh, Sarah can obviously negotiate the distance and, and Right, not getting taken down and, and getting the boxing match. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be dicey. I don't know who can win because Sarah's got some decent boxing, but I think Ronda's uh, probably a little sharper as long as she comes out and shows the confidence. But uh, you got to get the, the edge of the champion. She's uh, she's she's nasty. She is nasty, and she's had a very busy schedule, as you guys can relate to a little bit. Now trying to peak for the second time uh, in less than two months is Ronda Rousey. All right. Yes, sir. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, question about. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, you guys are obviously competitors, athletes. Um, you know, you pay a big price to be where you are. You know, in terms of getting there over the last five years, is 
Is sponsorship any easier now or any tougher now than, say, over the last five years for yourselves? And that's a question for each of you. Um, sponsorships are good. I mean, it depends on your manager. I think it's, it's a lot to do with it. Uh, I think it's obviously getting better. The sport's getting more attention on Fox, on, you know, all these, you know, it's a big network and it's a lot of viewership. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, the more popular it gets, the more it helps us and, uh, more people want to jump in, so uh, it's, it's a lot better than Strike Force. I'll tell you that. <laughs> My old days of Strike Force, it was tough. You know, it was like a, a ticking time. I was going to blow up. No one wanted to jump in, so I'm I'm happy. I love love being here. It's it's awesome. So I'll, I'll answer that question, and and you know, I hear a lot of complaining, honestly, from some of the fighters. Um, oh, I don't make anything on sponsorships, so I'm going to go complain, and I'm going to whine about it. <laughs> and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna lose my next fight and I'm wondering why sponsorships don't wanna sponsor me. And, you know, unfortunately we have a lot of, uh, in this sport you have athletes that aren't full-time athletes. You know, they come out here and they, they, they fight, they're a full-time athlete for maybe two months before their fight, you know. This is a dedicated, you, this sport needs your dedication, needs your commitment. I have not had an issue with any of my sponsors and I'll tell you why. I'm loyal to them. They are loyal to me. They come out and they see the dedication, the hard work, the sacrifices that I put into this sport, into their company, and how, how can you deny somebody that? If you have a guy who comes out there, hems and haws, makes excuses, do you want to back that guy? I don't. I don't want to be anywhere near that guy. You know what I mean? So I have no problems with sponsors. Sponsors don't have any problems with me, but it's a give and take relationship. Okay, and just a quick follow up if I could. Uh, we really don't know any details, but uh, there's some reports coming out about potentially the UFC looking at uniforms down the road. Do you care to comment on whether that could play any impact on your sponsorships, either negative or positive? Yeah, you know, um, there, there would have to be a system, I believe. You know, I'm not opposed to it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm opposed to it. I'm not, you know, I'm not fully informed on it. So. Really, to give a to give a comment on that this time, I would be ill-informed, and it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be worth you know its weight. So I really can't comment on that. Sorry. Yeah. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Again, two mics wide open for you guys. These are up here. Uh, these fellas up here for the next half hour. Or so uh, I want to move on to the co-main event here quickly, and eventually we'll get to your fights as well. But uh, for Daniel Cormier, Luke, you know the guy well. Uh, not a ton to gain here in this spot uh, against Patrick Cummins as a minus 1500 favorite, one of the biggest favorites we've seen in UFC history. Uh, what is DC's mindset fighting Patrick Cummins and not Rashad Evans this weekend? Uh, DC's a gamer. You know, he, uh, I don't think it matters who's in front of him. He's going to come and compete and uh, he needs to support his family and get paid. So, I mean, uh, he's got the, the right mindset. He's obviously got. You know, Pat's got under his skin with uh, the crying comment he made and making him cry back in the uh, out in Colorado and all that. But uh, you know, I mean, this is DC's opportunity to turn that around and make him cry. So I mean, I'm sure he yeah. wants to turn that on him. And uh, but this is a this is a great fight style matchup wise. It's like what I, I just don't I like. Pat, he's a tough guy. He's really you know he's a strong minded guy. But uh, I just don't see into his game and the stand up and his confidence. And I don't think Pat has that to compete with him. And uh, I, I believe this is going to be a one sided fight from the get go. Travis, when you're a couple weeks out, are you of the mindset that if your replacement gets injured, you're just going to say yes almost blindly, no matter who they call as a replacement of all? Yeah, man. The, the, you have too many sensitive guys out here these days. Um, <laughs> listen, man, I'm a fighter. This, this is what I do for a living. You ain't going to take that from me. So it don't matter who you put in front of me come April 19th. He's gonna catch an asshole there. Yeah. Yeah. The day before, the night before, 15 minutes before. I'm stepping the cage. I don't care who it is, anytime, anywhere. I've never denied a fight, and I won't. See, you're sensitive about the right things, because I know you have a sensitive side to you, but not when it comes to the fight game. We like I can get emotional, you know, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Before I thought of fighting as a, as a competition, I was that guy with his lip quivering, just swinging like, <laughs> <I'll be> like <laughs> I was that kid growing up. Uh, time. That's another story for, for another time. Cool. Your, yes, com sir. your comments here kind of worked into my question. Perfect. I know Travis, you're an aggressive fighter. I admire your style. 
uh, what do you use to contain your anger? You know, I know fighting is an, is an aggressive sport, but how do you contain your anger and, and maintain focus? What kind of tools do you use? So uh, it's really good because two years ago, you'll notice every fight until Chad Graves, right? You would see me pacing the cage, looking pissed off, like, I'm gonna you up, right? Five like, seconds. It's going down, we're gonna fight, me and you. Like, I was trying to convince him that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know if you know, but we're gonna fight. And I would have to get mad at him to fight. Now, the way I look at it, is this is a competition. I'm being competitive, this is a sport. Just like when I used to play in basketball, I didn't have to play mad to play basketball. When somebody would do something and piss me off, it would up my level even that much more. So during the fight, in Chad Griggs, in the back of the locker room, this is where Greg Jackson has earned his money and his respect, is I, first coach ever, I, I told him, coach, I feel heavy, my arms are dead, my legs are heavy, and I'm already tired. He's like, good, okay, come here. Stand on the mat, he turns his hat sideways, he goes, shadow box with me. And, you know, coach, I always make fun because he looks like Yoda when we're running through the forest in, in Albuquerque, right? And he just like starts doing all this goofy stuff, and I just start laughing, like giggling, and all of a sudden, boy, it was over. I started smiling, laughing. I fought with my own personality. I didn't try to be somebody else to fight. And that made me even more aggressive. That made me even more dangerous because now I can think and act and then and respond, not just going out there and trying to hurt somebody. You know what I mean? Well, I, I'm I'm no fighter. I'm 40 years old and never been a hey, fight in 15 years. We all my, my main point is is more things happen in my life through work, whether it be family or whatever. It makes me certain things make me angry, and I feel like I don't have a grasp of what I should really do until. I put the tools together to kind of maintain my focus and kind of look at it from an outside perspective. I was just wondering if you had any meditation or any, any kind of tricks you do, count to 10, or anything you do to kind of keep your composure. So um, I have a motivation, right, in my life. Everybody knows, it's my kids, no secret. Um, so with that in mind, if something distracts me from it, something pisses me off, makes me angry, all that is is that little extra motivation for the time being. Okay, so like when you're saying you're, something happens in your life, you get a little distracted, a little whatever, you know, but if you keep in mind your ultimate goal, your ultimate motivation, and what you're trying to accomplish, and let these little side, side things fuel you instead of distract you, there's nothing that you can't do. And we are all fighters, by the way, because you said you're not a fighter. But we're all fighters in our own way. We all have to come, overcome difficult times. We all struggle. We all fight to, to survive and to live. So, you know, man, just, just keep pushing forward. Um, use that as motivation. Don't let it distract you. You know what I mean? Get, let it give you that push. Don't let it make, you make a right turn. This is more for my daughter. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, dear. Dad was too scared to ask the question. <laughs> we got all day, no rush at all. You got no one behind you, so take your time. This question's for Travis Brown. Yeah. If you could fight anybody in the heavyweight division, who would it be? Oh, you don't have to get all upset for that. <laughs> Sweet. Oh. Man. Heavyweight division, I'm number three. I'm number three, I'm fighting number two. There's Junior and then there's King. My goal, sorry I get blood nose when I come out here to our Vegas, <laughs> but uh, allergies. Um, my goal is to leave a legacy in the sport. So whoever is in my way, I'm willing to fight. I'm not, I'm not a matchmaker, I'm a fighter. I let other people earn their money, but let them do their jobs. Um, King has a strap. He's his teammate. You know what I mean? I, that's that's my goal right now, is to get that strap. One more quick question. If they put you in there with Kane, do you think you could finish him? Yes. Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, two questions for Luke. Um, first question, with your upcoming fight, are you thinking of the mindset that 
if I win and win really devastatingly, I might be able to get a title shot next? Or are you just looking to win and whatever happens, happens? Uh, I'm always just looking to better myself. Every training camp, every opponent, it doesn't matter who they put in front of me. I'm just trying to be better and better. You know, I, I'm coming into my prime and I want to be the best in the world. That's my goal. And uh, Tim Boach is an opponent. And he's a tough guy and he's going to come forward. And, uh, kinda, I like that stuff. Uh, I'm always looking to win and win impressively. I'm not trying to get a fight of the night, trying to you know squeak out a decision. That means I took a beating. That means I you know I, I want this to be an effective, efficient win. And of course, I want to be exciting. You know, I want to put on a show for the fans, and uh, and I need to, you know, of course. And I, I believe I can. And I, I don't think I'll get a title shot from this, no, no doubt. But uh, it could definitely project me into a, a number one contender fight, you know, depending on my performance. And uh, I believe I can go out there and win impressively, and I will. Thank you. And second question: um, After your last fight in Atlanta, you were kind enough to take a picture with with my friend, uh, you and her, as you were leaving the cage. You have a fan for life. That picture is now her profile on Facebook. If I was able to get her on the phone, would you be able to say hello to her real quick? I would, I would. I'm okay, so, I'm thank so you. Pull her up and come back up. I'm so jealous. Sorry. He's hot, guys. Just stay on your side. Stay on your side. I'm asking you to get further away from me. I can't be I we don't need to turn this into bully beatdown. Come on. <laughs> well, stop bowling me up. Stop bowling me around then. Shoot. Yes, sir. Hey, Tra Travis, in a, in a perfect world, you beat Verdum, and then uh, UFC, when it goes to Mexico, Kane headlines it. What do you, how do you feel about going into such hostile territory? Well, it, it's, it's not necessarily enough to be a perfect world, but um, I am winning April 19th, there's no doubt. Going into Mexico, fighting a guy like Kane, is the shit that I live for. <laughs> this is what I do. I would rather go into somebody else's territory and go get into a fight. Because I'll tell you what, the cage, the octagon doesn't change. Yeah, as we saw, you uh, battle adversity pretty well. You know, I eat her doom her uh, mediocre. Well, over his knees. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on that end. Me but uh, <laughs> pressure's added just a little bit going to Mexico for the first time, huh? Nah. Here's, here's the thing, man. If outside, if I let outside pressure affect me, I'm already, I've already lost the fight. I create my own pressure. Out of pressure comes diamonds, right? And that's, that's what I'm trying to become. I'm not trying to pull up like Beyonce or anything like that. I'm not you know, shine bright like a diamond. But what I'm saying is that great things come from pressure, and I'm going to put the own pressure on myself, my own pressure on me. I'm not going to let other stuff affect me. I don't care where it is. Like I said. In that octagon, it's the same mat, it's the same cage. We have a referee, and there's a big dude trying to kick my butt. And that's that's the story of my life. That's why I live for it. And that's why you're a winner. Keep being you. Thank you, sir. Although you just played Rihanna something fierce, but we'll let that go. Yes, ma'am. Right, this question is for you. Um, I'm Sienna, who's native, and nice. I'm, I'm just really happy. Um, thank you. You represent. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, coming up, where did you train? What was your first um, gym that you trained in in the area? And also, um, how do your parents feel about you fighting and everything? I mean, coming up, do they want you to be a doctor? Or... He didn't train. You know what this dude did? He surfed. He was half naked in shorts with a six pack, eight pack, and for a cold water that's not white. Hey, was... man, I, at least you could use that excuse. I couldn't. And I still had that same problem. But all I'm saying is he's just, he, he doesn't need to train. He's so handsome. They mesmerize. He mesmerizes his opponents. That's why Costas was like, okay, wow, look at your eyes. Oh. I found the right mindset. Sit back and make it easier. Um, uh, really, on a real note, uh, love it. Thanks for coming out from Santa Cruz. You still live there? Uh, well, yeah, back and forth. Nice. Um, I, uh, I grew up, obviously, born and raised. Born and raised. Uh, yes. Um, uh, born and raised in Santa Cruz. Uh, I, uh, started, I started judo when I was a young kid. Actually, uh, one of my best friends had a uh, his dad. Uh, on the studio uh, out in Watsonville. So I started there when I was like six years old, trained for there for a couple of years and competed. And then uh, that transitioned. You know, I did a bunch of sports, got distracted, and then I got into wrestling. 
back in junior high, that led to high school, and then I, I started jujitsu actually in town. That's my first, you know, real martial art, I guess. After um, <laughs> Garth Taylor was my was my coach there, and uh, I worked with him for many years and started competing, and, uh, and then that led to uh, AK eventually. And then I drove with Hill, and now, now I'm fighting. So uh, uh, it's uh, I, I love what I do. Everything just kind of escalated, got better and better. I wanted you know that next step. It was, it was judo, and then, and then I, you know, wrestling was a little more aggressive for me, and then like something was missing from wrestling, and, and I found jiu-jitsu, and I got to choke people, and then I did jiu-jitsu, and something was missing. And, and I, Believe it or not, my mom's like one of my biggest fans. She, oh, that's great. she comes around all over the world, and she even wanted to come to Brazil, and I was like, I looked where we were going and what we were doing, I'm like, she was going to come with her girlfriend, and I'm like, Mom, I don't want this on my conscience. Please, please don't come to Brazil. Just this one. Like, it's the only fight she's ever missed. So, uh... So she uh, she swears she'll never miss another one. She's my good luck charm. <laughs> so so uh, jealous these awesome. freaking hot Thank guys. You. <laughs> and they can kick ass. Jeez, what Jeez. is this problem? I'm getting Nobody beat up, up over here. Nobody <laughs> likes to show up. <laughs> What's going it's on? all right. It's cool. Yes, sir. How's it going, guys? Um, quick question for Luke. Uh, I don't know if you caught the fights uh, last weekend. Um, who do you think deserves the next shot at the belt between uh, Machida and uh, Jacare? I think they both say they deserve a shot. They both should fight each other. I mean, I, I personally, I, I, yeah, I, I, they should fight each other. Who wants to see Jock Ray versus Machida? Do you guys want to see that fight? I mean, they're still waiting for the title shot. I mean, like, they still got a, you know, Vitor and uh, Weidman are getting it on. So, I mean, in the meantime, match that up. Uh, I, think, I think that's a great, great fight. You know, I've, I've fought Jock Ray and I've trained with Machida. The guys are both amazing fighters. So, uh, you know, I, I think they should fight. That, I mean, it makes sense. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Spoken like a true fellow middleweight contender. Have those guys <laughs> pluck each other off and then dust we both should back move on in. Yeah. Hey, I want to fight Jock Ray again. Excuse Come me, on. you're interrupting my question. <laughs> I still have a... You're interrupting my question. Sorry. Go ahead, sir. I have a question Bearded for Travis brethren here. Before John... See that bald? See? And bearded? You like that? Um, I have winning two of your last three fights by uh, elbows against the cage. Do you think... The single shot against you, against the cage, is the worst position to be in in all of mixed martial arts. Um, it's a pretty bad one for them. <laughs> I agree. For me, it's a great one. I made an extra $125,000 off of that for them taking those shots, and I will not complain if they keep doing it. Um, Agreed. Yeah. But, uh, no, I wouldn't have to say it's the worst position. I think it's, um, you know, and, and we've, I've gone over my head, you know, possibly fighting a guy like Kane, Kane's not going to make that mistake. You know what I mean? So it was, uh, I look at myself as an opportunist in the cage. I see something, I'm going to jump on it. I have the power to back it up. And um, that, the, 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 or the result is what you get from me just seeing something, jumping on it, and doing what I do. Thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm. Travis has pretty much trained like changed everyone's outlook on double legs. I think everyone's going home, they're practicing their elbows, trying to work that on the cage, and everyone who's wrestling is like, don't, you're not sitting there. You know, we've actually had practices. Keeping your head on, on, the, on the inside. Don't get to the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta be careful, don't, don't, don't stall on the cage. So I think- I don't I think, know why more people don't use it, honestly. And to be honest with you, I've never practiced it. The first time I ever practiced it, um, I made 50 grand on Gonzaga. And the second time I ever practiced it, I made 75 grand on Barnett. So two times I practiced it. I didn't even hold a, I didn't hold a clinic or anything. But I am going to uh, copyright it. Well, I think I need a copy. Leverage and length obviously is a big help. With the I think I need to copyright it so you guys can't hold those seminars unless you're paying <laughs> a fee. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a thought in a gym with a guy like Kane <laughs> and DC in there. So, yeah. This is for Travis. I'm sticking with the elbows because Conor McGregor posted a video of himself two years ago knocking out his opponent using the same elbows. Don't so maybe you'll have that. to speak to him about coming. I was the first Conor. guy to do it. I, I was the first no. guy to do it. But could, could you just get together and name them together or something? I'm sorry, I, I, didn't, no? I didn't hear your question because I was the first guy to do it. <laughs> I was the first guy. First guy right here. First guy. Originator. Could you just not speak together and name it together or no? Yeah, man. I mean, that guy, I love that guy, man. He has so much personality. You know what I mean? He's, he's great. Now, due to your accent, I think I'm losing a little bit of your question, but were you asking if him and I would get together and teach it? No, name it, copyright oh, it together. Oh, name it, name it. Give um, him some of the credit as well. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> down here. Hey, he's probably going to want to take the front part of that, whatever we name it, but I can't let him, even though I, because I was the first one to do it, remember that? 
and <laughs> I want more recognition than, than he gets. I'm just greedy like that. I'm trying to be famous. He's already famous. Maybe it could be the, the notorious Hapa Elbow. That's both of your names. Maybe. I, like I said, I, his name comes first. I don't know how I like that. <laughs> I think I need to go first. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, man. Yes, sir, what do you got? All right, first part for Travis. Um, fighting in the heavyweight division, you've got a great big weight variance in there. Do you see that as a disadvantage where somewhere down the line they should split that and make a super heavyweight? Um, I think if we get enough competitors that are between 220, that have to cut to maybe make 220, be until maybe 245 right now there's not enough competitors you know what i mean so you yep. can't have that division you can't have another division it, it wouldn't make sense you know what i mean um plus you know i i don't i'm not i don't make excuses these guys over <laughs> here what? these guys that cut weight <laughs> no i'm gonna cut 20 pounds and fight a guy that's just as big as me because he has to cut 20 pounds why don't you guys just agree to fight at a bigger weight, you know what I mean? Then you don't have to cut weight. But I don't get it, because I am 20 pounds less than most of my opponents. This guy hates me, he's gonna punch me in the back. Dude, he's gonna kick his <laughs> leg, I think, look at that guy. I feel, I feel like Wait, we're on that comedy roast. How tall, how tall are you again? Uh -huh. I don't know, it doesn't, uh, high right. is only a number. All but right. um, yeah, so, so uh, I don't think weight should be as big of an issue at all. Okay, my next question for you. as. UFC spectators, yours and Luke's dream fight to see out of current fighters. Ooh, that needs some thought into it, and then you walk away like a boss. <laughs> um, I'll let you touch you know, on that. You said current fighters right now, right? Yes. You know what I think would be really cute? <laughs> I would love to see the little mini me's. Little exactly. Cabbage Patch Kids. Exactly. I would like to see a Royal Rumble. <laughs> like, you know, you have, um, I, I don't know, politically correct or anything, but the littler people. You know, against like, in WrestleMania and stuff, you know, you have the littler people against the bigger people. I would love to see that. And I will take on five of those guys, because they're so cute, and when they get angry, <laughs> they start shaking, and they turn red, and all you want to do is pinch their little cheek and say, you're so cute. Dude, and, these you know, flyweights are so pissed right now. Here, so <laughs> they're so mad, but it's so cute at the same time. And then their hair bouncing, so it's a wonderful thing. Luke, you got any any dream matchup in any division right now in the UFC? Travis sort of dodged that question uh, a little bit. I think let's make it let's make it fun. Mighty Mouse versus Kane. <laughs> I think I think it would actually be truthfully. I actually think it might be competitive. I don't know if Kane could find him. He might just win off leg kicks for five rounds. Who knows? I mean, That's you never I know. How was that answer any different than mine? And you called me out, John Anik. Well, I he's got we UFC fighters. Now you're talking about little people. He's talking about UFC fighters. Yeah, but they're little people. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. You get the last word. You deserve it. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, my, my, friend, my friend is waiting to talk to you, Luke. Do you want me to get with you later, or do you want yeah, to put her well, on? Yeah, let's do that after the okay. Q&A, if you don't yeah, mind, awesome, and man. we'll go to the young man behind you. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, Luke, just throwing this out there. I, I wrestle at AKA back in San Jose. Nice with shirt. Dan, with Daniel. Thank you. Uh, so I was wondering, who do you think the best fighters in each division that haven't got their well-deserved title shot are? <laughs> <laughs> um... There's a guy at heavyweights. He's kind of clean, you know, trimmed up a little bit. Uh, Handsome. Is this, uh, it's pretty hot right now. Is his name Alistair Overeem? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, right. oh, look at this guy. Yeah. Oh, brave boy. Yeah. Out of boy. That's that a, that a tough question, but I, I, you know, I gotta think highly of myself, my division. Of course, I'm a fighter, and uh, I believe in myself. You can't go wrong with my man sitting to my right. Uh, you know, uh, I think Daniel Cormier at light heavyweight. I'm yeah. gonna have to speak up for my boy DC. 
representing. Yeah. I think he's the I think he's the man to dethrone John. I truly do. I think his wrestling and his confidence. I think he can dictate where that fight takes place. So that'll be a big deal. Uh, I think the two guys fighting right now at, at welterweight are, are both amazing fighters. That's going to be a clash. I mean, that lefty versus lefty with the big power coming from both sides. Man, I'm, I'm excited for that fight. Uh, and man, it just gets lower. Now we're getting into the Munchkins. So I mean, I'm they just, all look alike, <laughs> and they all. Look I'm just so joking. Old. I'm not that guy. No. Remember, <laughs> it looks so cute though. That's all you gotta remember. Uh, when they get angry. Yeah, I mean, 55. Truthfully, Aldo would be would be awesome. You know, throwing him in the mix and seeing how he does there. That'd be that'd be entertaining. Um, yeah, and, and it goes on and on. I mean, Goyo, Goyo, uh, Goyo Perez at 35. Yes, sir. It's my boy. Yeah, we'll let him he's he's making. He's he's coming. He's gonna make a strong run. You got any other Munchkins you want to talk about? Sure. As I we got, go down I got the chain. Plenty of them. Plenty Let's of go them. down to the chain. Now we're now we're in the 35. Uh, 35. No, that was 35. Oh, that was 35. Oh, oh. We, just 35. Jumped, we just jumped That's 45. A, I did. I did. I uh, I tricked yeah. you. A well, little trickery. Shows, I shows, how, know, shows how much I know. You guys got to fight at like 215 or something. Just fight each other at like 215 pounds at some don't point. We could just do it as time. an exhibition what? or something. We could just take this to Game of Arms. Hey, don't, what's that? <laughs> it's, a, it's the new show that's on like every you know station. Oh, I thought it was like a video game or something. No. Oh, it's arm, arm wrestling. wrestling. It's okay. On, hey. it's on hey, like every, I've seen don't them. tempt me with a good time. Yeah. I might take you up on it. <laughs> Over the top, baby. There you go. Over the top. I'm going to turn my hat backwards. Do it. You've been waiting patiently. Yes, yes. ma'am. What do you got? Um, Ever this so is patiently. actually for Travis. Um, I don't have tickets for tomorrow's fight, so I was wondering if I could challenge you to maybe some push-ups or a plank challenge. Get some tickets. I have a reputation that I have to uphold, <laughs> and losing a challenge like that to you would destroy it. <laughs> and I have I'm a down. feeling. I'm down. I have a feeling, and I'm not usually like this because I'm a pretty confident man. I don't know if you've noticed. Yes. But I'm pretty confident yes. in myself. I think I would lose. I'm so bad at push-ups and planks. Let's do it. Tickets? What are, what are, you, what are you asking for now? What are you, one ticket, two tickets. Oh, you want me going head-to-head? Uh, -head? Oh, no. She I'm would dust me one. in a second. I'll go no. solo. I'm You'll go one. solo? You're, you're going to leave? Tell him to accompany you. You're going to leave your man to come hang out with me? I, I, I'm single. Single. Oh, watch no out. No man, watch so out. I'll go solo. And no. she's single and she's talking to you and not Luke. How about that noise, huh? Oh. Well, uh, we got about five more minutes with these guys, so if Travis is going to take you up on that challenge, uh, stage left, I think it is, when we're done here, and uh, we'll left. see if TB can crank out 50 push-ups. So push -ups you're, you're saying I'm going okay. stage right while she goes stage left? You're telling her to go stage left so I can sneak out? Exactly, yeah, back? that's good. Okay. Stage um, left. Five minutes, though, we got stage with these left. guys. If you have any other questions, feel free uh, to fire away, and we got one. Uh, yeah, I apologize. Uh, I'm celebrating my 10-year anniversary, guys, and my wife is too afraid to ask y'all, so I've been challenged to come up and ask myself. Um, are either of you disheartened, or do you, how do you feel, I guess, about the main event being a female fight? How do you guys feel about the females coming into the UFC? My wife's been kickboxing for two years, and so she was wanting to know. Disheartened, not one bit. I'll tell you what, man. The women fighters... I believe has made this sport more legit than any other male fighter. I'm not saying that just to be nice to you ladies, I believe it. And the reason I believe it is because I was not a believer in the beginning. And they came out and they put on some of the best fights that I've seen. So then they've gotten almost back to the pure sport of MMA, going out there and just leaving it all in the cage. And that's what I've seen and it's been amazing. I'm with him. I'm with him on this. You have two Olympic medalists who have trained their whole lives and proven themselves time and time and again. And, and those girls are amazing. And uh, they perform and they put on a show. They've earned their spot. And uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to watch them. Happy to fight under them if I have to too. Well, guys, I tell you what. Just from uh, us out here, uh, great comment. Oh. Luke. We like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> In that That's case. Speaking from <laughs> we'll, we'll cut our answers a little short. But I did, I did just want to say thank you guys. We have a nine-year-old son that's training right now, and it's guys like you that make the sport reputable and make it professional, and so thank you very much. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we got time for two more questions, one on each side. Yes, ma'am. 
Hi, this question is for Travis. Yes, uh, I know you said you really wanted the strap, but would you rather have a rematch with Bigfoot first, or would you rather have the title shot first? So my goal in this career, in my life right now, one is to be the best father in the world. The second one is to leave a legacy in the sport. Wearing that belt, having that strap, is just gonna be a byproduct of leaving that legacy. Um, I don't care about rematches, I have my sights set. I'm looking forward, I'm not looking backwards. If he wants to, once I get that belt, if he wants to earn a shot to come get it from me, he's more than welcome. I will oblige him 200%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reed Harris, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, he has a special presentation here in a few minutes, but one final question. All uh, you, buddy. Hi. Um, I know Lyoto said he wouldn't fight Anderson, and Daniel Cormier he dropped down to not fight Kane. I was just wondering, from an inside perspective, what your thoughts are on you know, not fighting uh, teammates or friends, and is there anyone that you wouldn't fight if the UFC title was on the line? I, my outlook on this is, might be a little bit different than others, um, because I don't have that bond with somebody like Kane has with uh, DC, um, uh, Anderson has with Lyoto. I'll fight anybody. I pay, I, so people punch me in the face for free in my gym, and I punch them in the face for free, I might as well go get paid for it. This is my sport, this is what I do, this is what I live for, so if you're gonna come and get me paid, thank you, I'll take that paycheck and the strap, thank you, and go home. How do you follow it's that tough. up? It's tough, it's I can't, <laughs> you've been still in show. I, I, it depends on how close you are, of course, you know, but I think if it's for the belt, I mean, that would be the only way it would go down. Uh, but it, it's tough, you know, if you if you have that tight bond with somebody, it's like, you know, you beat them and, you know, it depends on how you beat them, you're crushing their dreams. And, uh, and it's hard to do that to one of your best friends. So, uh, I mean, I, I think if you're that tight, you avoid each other to the last possible point. And, and that point is for the title. That is to prove who is the best in the world. And that's the only way it should go down in my book. Chael Sutton, everybody, still in our limelight. <laughs> Thank you, Chael. All right, that's going to do it for us. You guys have been outstanding. Don't forget the fighters tip this very scale at 4 o'clock here locally. One final time, Luke Rockhold and Travis Brown. And now we hand off the mic to Reed Harris.